Bye, Juliet. Love you. Bye, Romeo. See you soon. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 26 of the Jack Rule Show. Sophomore year. I keep forgetting to mention that. It's, it's the sophomore year season, by the way. Welcome, everyone. Today is the 300th episode of the Jack Rule Show. So, I'm doing a question and answer because I also just hit 900 subscribers. But I'm also going to New York, so. Send you guys some pictures. All right, love you. All right, love you, Dad. I'm in New York, time to get to my hotel, and after that I'm free. checked in, made it to the hotel. I'm room 517, so I have no clue where that is, but uh, I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm excited. This should be a fun time. This elevator. Oh my goodness. This is amazing. <laughs> I mean, just look at this place. This is awesome. I have a bed, a second bed, a TV, it's perfect. <laughs> Let's see what the bathroom looks like. Oh, nice. Cool. Everything you need. Where's the light switch? Hey. All right, well, I think this looks awesome. Let's see what the view looks like. Whoa. That is so cool. Thirsty? <laughs> Justin would be excited about this view. There's a buffalo wild wings across the street. <laughs> Justin would be very excited about this view. All right, well, this is cool. I think it's perfect. It's everything you need. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Joey gets here in T minus six hours. All right, well, I said that I would do a Q&A since I hit 900 subscribers, so that is what I'm gonna do. I hope the background noise isn't too loud, but it's New York, so deal with it. <laughs> Let's get to some questions, shall we? Question number one from my friend Gene Carlo. What was your least and favorite film of the year? I don't have a least favorite film of the year because I haven't seen Aquaman, <laughs> but my favorite film of the year was probably Mission Impossible Fallout. Really enjoyed it, but a close second would be Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I really love that one as well. Uh, from my friend Reed, he says, how did you get such a sick forehand toss? I don't know, but I'm glad I have it because Ultimate Frisbee is fun. <laughs> Calvin Pittman says, why don't you come to Florida, man? Calvin, I don't come to Florida because I am broke and I have no reason to. So, unless I have a reason to, or unless I'm not broke, I probably won't be in Florida for a while. Have you ever been in France? No, I have not, but I want to make it happen one day. What are you most looking forward to in 2019? This New York City trip. Uh, also, becoming an uncle and getting better every single day at the small things that I want to get better at. Very excited about that. Advice on how to bounce back and move on, example from a bad midterm grade or relationships. Um, I can't really give relationship advice because I've only ever been on one date, so I don't exactly know too much there. But bouncing back from anything bad that has ever happened to me, like a bad grade or I don't know, anything, any mistakes I've ever made, any bad things that's happened, the best way that I've gotten over anything bad has been through one, spending time with people I love, whether it's family or friends 
and two, working on something that I love. So whether it's working on videos or working on scripts or even just doing anything like going for a run, taking my mind off of whatever I'm upset about has helped. I don't necessarily know if that helps for relationships, but it helps for any time I had anything bad happen to me. Most of the time. Uh, let's see, what else, what else? Uh, favorite vlog of sophomore year? I don't have one yet. I haven't made that many. I really liked the, the all of them. I don't know. I don't have a favorite yet. I think one of my New York City ones will probably be my favorite. From la na 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 on Instagram. <laughs> How to write a short film script. Also, tips for beginning filmmakers. You write a script by putting down one word after another. That is it. You can learn all the formatting, all the like specifics of writing in Google or in class or in a book but you write a script by just writing. That is my biggest tip for beginning filmmakers as well. Just write and do. The more you do, the more you're gonna learn. So it's very important for you to be doing as much as you can. Don't try to make it perfect. A lot of people try and be perfectionists. Done is always better than perfect. Keep going, keep working on it. And uh, beginner filmmakers, learn everything you can about film. Like give everything you have into learning about it. Every moment that you have a spare time, if you have a five minute walk, from class to your dorm, or from your house to school. As much time as you can, be learning about film. And like, I still do this myself. You just dive into it with your whole heart, with your whole energy, and uh, just give it your all. The way you go about learning things is what matters the most, I think. <laughs> all right, next question. darker for serenity says, where do you see your YouTube in a year? and five years. This one's interesting because my YouTube is very, it's very, I don't know where it's gonna go. In a year, I see myself still documenting using the Jack Roll Show. In five years, wherever God puts me, I don't know where I'm gonna be. That's another question I got. Where do you see yourself in five years? I have no clue where I'm gonna be in five years, but I know that I'm gonna be doing what I love and I know that I'm gonna be working hard. So my YouTube, I basically just wanna be documenting that. The Jack Roll Show will only be for college, but I definitely wanna keep documenting my life after that, so. I'll see where it takes me, if that makes sense. What was your favorite episode of the show that you've made? My sister Louise's wedding. Still one of my favorite episodes of all time. Man, this just keeps falling. You were in my Spanish class. Are you fluent now? Let me say this in Spanish. No. <laughs> uh, Morgan K. Boyd asks, what is your favorite movie? La La Land. <laughs> favorite show on Netflix? Right now, I really love The Good Place. I just watched it all in like three days. It's great, I love it, it's, it's well done. NBC, Michael Schur, phenomenal guy. Van Hasseler asks, favorite artist? It has to be Childish Gambino. I listen to too much Childish Gambino not to have him be my favorite artist. Solid guy. All right, let's see, what else? Evan Gold asks, how do you stay motivated? First off, Evan, hope you're doing well. Thanks for the question. Uh, and second off, I stay motivated based on two things. Perspective and gratitude, and that gratitude comes from perspective. Uh, I wear this necklace around my neck, this coin around my neck, because I found this in Haiti on a mission trip, I think my junior year of high school. And basically, the perspective that I got from that mission trip to Haiti showed me just how much I don't have any room to complain. So, I stay motivated because that perspective of there's always someone who has it worse than me. There's always gonna be someone who has it worse. So there's that side, but there's also the side of how much so many other people have done for me that I can't help but not be motivated. Like to me, there is so much work that I like, I wanna get done so that I can give back to the people who have helped me get to where I am today. So I'm very thankful for that. It's like perspective and gratitude mixed together makes this like motivation combo. You just gotta spend a lot of time thinking about what you're grateful for. And I try and do that every day. Cool. Uh, next up. Uh, either way, your content is amazing, but are you straight? Yes, I am straight. I am a cisgendered straight male, a straight white guy from Pennsylvania. Wink. It's <laughs> a shout out to my white Chapman video. Connor asks, what has been the hardest transition for you since arriving at Chapman? I think the hardest transition for me has been trying to find the balance between my life back home and my life at Chapman. Because I'm kind of split right now where, like I still have my family back in Lancaster, but I still have like my entire life and like everything I'm doing at Chapman. So trying to find the balance between, you know, my childhood versus my future, if that makes sense. That's been pretty hard. Pros and cons of Chapman University. Just a short list. 
pros, you can stand out if you're good enough. I like that. It's a smaller class size, so you get to be closer with the people around you. Also, it's in Orange County, which is like one of the most beautiful places in the United States and like on the earth, so that's beautiful. Um, some cons, it does cost a lot of money. I do have to take out a lot of loans to try and make it happen. And I'm also working like four jobs, so that doesn't help. Or I guess that does help. <laughs> um, man, I don't know too many cons of Chapman. Pro, we have this, the Finestra. <laughs> I just thought that was funny that there's like finestras outside my window. Cool. Alright, let's see. What else? What else? What else? If you could live in any fantasy universe, which one would you choose? Uh, the one in my head. <laughs> I would definitely want to live in a place where my imagination can just create everything. That'd be pretty cool. Wouldn't be cool if I have nightmares though. Is that a fantasy universe? I don't know. I think that counts. Because like Star Wars, I don't know. That counts. Do you like Miss Puff? Uh, Jace Gibbons asks, when looking at colleges, what was the most important thing that you were looking for in a school? Jace, the most important thing I looked for in a school was somewhere that was going to be able to, like, use me, like that I would be able to participate in a lot, but also I would get a lot from. So Chapman, for example, is perfect for me because I feel like I'm able to give a lot there, but I'm also getting a lot as well. So I really looked for a place that could be, like, a springboard to my career, that I think Chapman has everything that I want, that if I work hard enough, Chapman's gonna basically bounce me into my future, if that makes sense. That's pretty important. Uh, what's your advice on figuring out what you want to do after high school? College versus no college or else. Um, this one's an interesting one because I thought for a very long time that I was just gonna go to community college and then transfer to like Chapman or to a place like this. And then I was like, you know, I don't need community college. I'm a filmmaker, like I'm good enough. I can just go straight into the film industry. So I thought for a very long time about what I was gonna do after high school, and that helped. Advice there is ask a lot of questions of yourself. Take a lot of time thinking about things, you know, developing what you like to do. And if you don't know what you like to do, this is the advice that I give my brothers anytime they will listen to me. <laughs> anytime they'll listen, I tell them, my little brothers, I say, you don't know what you like to do until you try things. You don't know what food you like until you try it and you're like, no, I don't like this. So, I found that I love film because I didn't like anything else that I was doing. I hated science, I didn't like math, I'm terrible at English and history, but I loved film. So I knew that, hey, this is something I could do for the rest of my life. So my biggest piece of advice for anyone who doesn't know what they want to do with their life, try things. Figure it out, you know, it's scary to try things, but if you do it while you're young, even if you're old, you figure out what you don't like and you figure out what you do like. And if you like it, and if you're good at it, then you should do it because that's what's going to be the best. Alright, I think that's... Oh no, I still have a couple more questions. Alright, final round of short little questions. Uh, who's your favorite child voice actor that also lives on your floor in Henley? Obviously Maeve. Since entering college, in what ways have you grown? Physically, mentally, spiritually, etc. Uh, I have grown in pretty much every single way I can imagine. Physically, I feel like I've gotten faster and I can jump higher, so that's good. Um, I've also gotten more in shape, if that makes sense, just from everything that I've been doing and running around. So physically, I've gotten better. Mentally, I feel like I've gotten a lot tougher and a lot stronger. And I feel like I just, I know a lot more just in general about a lot of things. So I do think that mentally I've grown a ton. Spiritually, I've definitely grown in making my faith my own. That's been like the biggest thing. Like I've realized just how important it is to make my faith my own. And it's like not what my parents taught me, but what I truly believe. So spiritually, that's how I've grown. Uh, question, where's the future of the movie industry, LA or Atlanta? Trick question, it's actually both. Because LA will always be Hollywood, like they're Pretty much always going to have Hollywood there. Uh, Hollywood is going nowhere, but Atlanta is basically the Hollywood of the South. So, if you are paying attention, then you know that Atlanta's blowing up. They're glowing up too. The glow up is real. All right, those are all the questions I want to answer for now. That was a long round, and I want to save some for later when Joey's here. So I will continue later. But for now, I'm going to take a nap because I'm tired, and I will see you all in a bit. I didn't even land on a pillow. Uh, hi, so we've been doing a walking tour for the past hour. And guess who's here? <laughs> What's up, dude? Longest day ever. I can imagine. Oh, it's good to see you, dude. Okay, happy, happy New Year, Merry Christmas, all that fun stuff. You too. All right. Uh, 
we're just going to eat dinner, so we're gonna go get some food. Cause I haven't eaten all day, and I doubt Joey has eaten much yeah, either. I, I, the last thing I ate, concrete thing, was a Cinnabon at like a while ago. It's East Coast time. The time's different in everything. <laughs> all right, we'll we'll be right back. <laughs> Hi, welcome back. Uh, we're we're back in the hotel. Before I wrap up the show for today, I wanted to make sure I talked about my analysis of today and what I thought of, you know, everything that happened. Um, so, <laughs> something I've been doing all day is I've been like writing down little notes or like jotting down little drawings of ideas that I've like come up with today. So I figured I would share them with everyone right now. Also, because it's part of the classes that I need to you know, do this, but because I want you guys to know. Basically what we did today was we walked around a lot and then we had a group dinner, but my favorite parts of today were the times that I just spent like reflecting and like observing everything going on around me. I took like half an hour earlier where I just sat in Times Square and just watched everyone around me. It's something that I like to do to try and like make up stories or just see what comes to me. And something I observed was that everyone had a camera. Like most people had a camera either similar to mine or they had some sort of camera. And I came to this like conclusion that like if everyone has a camera, then it truly means that like gear does not matter. Now there is like, you know, obviously I can't go around shooting everything with like a point and shoot. That was made in 1998, but I'm trying to say the camera is only as good as the storyteller behind it. So, I like to think of, you know, my storytelling ability. There's always gonna be someone who's better than me at, you know, camera work, or at writing, or directing, but there's no one who is like me. So, that is your superpower, that there's no one like you. So, I kinda took that away today. It was just really encouraging to me to know that, you know, no matter what gear I have, it's up to me and, you know, the story that I wanna tell. And I think that's, you know, pretty encouraging. So, today was great. I loved it. Had a really good burger. Um, or I had half of a really good burger at dinner. But yeah, uh, I, I'm really excited to see what this trip holds, and I think it's gonna be a fun time. With that said, Joey, think anything needs to be added? Yeah, New York City is, I think it's like very, it's not ironic. We're in an industry where it's a very limited amount of people who actually make it and who are actually successful. It, it, it is very much like we are dreamers and we are like, as they say, like in La La Land, here's to the fools who dream. And I feel like New York is depicted as a city where anything is possible. So I think this class is perfect in taking us here and showing us that, hey, if you work your butt off, you can end up in a place like this and make your dreams come true. So I think this is a very inspiring city to be in, and it's very empowering, especially as an artist, to be in this city. So I'm really excited for what the next two weeks have in store. Absolutely. I couldn't have said it better myself. So, with that said, thank you all for watching. See you all tomorrow if you, you know, if you want to stay. If you enjoyed today's episode, if you liked my answers to your questions, make sure to subscribe, and as always, what should people do, Joey? What the retainer in? Be awesome! <laughs> Be awesome. And don't forget to dream. Or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> I'm a nerd. Alright, uh, my friend Connor asks, What has been the hardest transition for you since or... <laughs> <laughs> Solid. <laughs>